a very good morning to you. Once again, it's an honor and a privilege to come and sh uh, across and share the word of God with you. Thank you again for taking the time to watch and to listen. We just want to invite you to uh, comment so that we get some feedback from you to, to like, share, uh, and also subscribe even uh, to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Um, our subject matter this morning is a subject that uh, I think is pertinent. I have entitled the message of vaccinations and 666. Of vaccinations and 666. There's a lot of talking around uh, about the fact some people want to put it across that the vaccinations that are currently being uh, utilized to fight COVID-19 uh, 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 the mark of the beast 666. I want to s us to look at the scriptures and see what the scriptures say. And we pick that from Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, Daniel and the children of Israel are in captivity in Babylon. And as they are in captivity in Babylon, uh, Daniel uh, uh, picks up a scroll. And that's where we pick it up from verse 1. We're going to pick up particular scriptures. It says, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of, of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Uh, that's where we pick it up. So Daniel tells us that he, he then picked up these books, scrolls, and then he read uh, in the book of Jeremiah the prophet, where Jeremiah told, said that it's going to take 70 years for the children of Israel to be in captivity in Babylon. That's where he found out. And then he began to pray and to seek God's face uh, uh, concerning the nation of Israel. So what I want you to notice is it's about the nation of Israel. He sought his face to seek God concerning his people. Uh, it says in, 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 in uh, verse 20, Now while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill and understand, uh, skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, uh, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Verse 24, this is where we will dwell. Uh, this is what the angel Gabriel said to Daniel. Say, 70 weeks are determined for your people. Which people? Israel, because da Daniel was praying concerning his people Israel. So it has to do with uh, Israel. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Hallelujah. Then he continues in verse 25. Know therefore and understand uh, that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in trouble sometimes. And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, not, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate. Now, that's the passage of scriptures that we are going to deal with uh, as we look at th this particular uh, situation. Now, where we read, we, we, we said Daniel found the scrolls on Jeremiah, by Jeremiah, and said it was going to take 70 weeks. Then Gabriel comes in response to his prayers, and then tells him that 70 weeks are determined upon your people. The first and foremost thing that I want us to realize uh, is that he talks about 70 weeks. The weeks that he speaks about are not weeks of days. 
the, there is many uh, verses in scripture that shows us that the word week there is speaking of seven, seventy sevens. Uh, so it can be a week in the scriptures, it can be a week of years, it can be a week of days, okay? Uh, but this one is 70 weeks or 70 sevens uh, of years. So he says 70 sevens of years are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, um, uh, etc., etc. Then in verse 25, so let me uh, get back to the verse 24. 70 weeks are determined upon your people. What I'm simply saying is the scriptures are others. We do not have time to uh, bring them in. Show us that the, these weeks are not weeks of days, but weeks of years. That's one of the most fundamental things to understand before we go any further. He gives us this particular setting and this particular uh, number of years. We have, um, uh, he, is, he tells us that 70 weeks are determined for your people, uh, Israel, the holy city, Jerusalem. So the 70 years, like I have mentioned, is the, 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 the weeks rather are weeks of years and not weeks of days. So, which means the way it should read in the actual uh, uh, writing is 77s of years. In other words, we would then uh, calculate to say 70 times 7, which is 490 years. So what he's saying is that 490 years are determined upon your people uh, 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 and the holy city. And then he then tells us that uh, um, what's then uh, in, a, in verse uh, 25. That know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks. Seven weeks, seven sevens, which means seven times seven, which is 49 years. And that is the time frame that it took for the uh, city of Jerusalem to be built. Because it tells us, even the street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. If you go back to the book of Nehemiah, you will realize it was indeed in troublous times when the city was rebuilt and the wall was rebuilt. So that took 49 years. Now, if we go back, he says, the, the, from the time of the giving of the command. The command, according to the scriptures uh, and also to Bible history, was given in 445 BC by King Artaxerxes. We find that in the book of Nehemiah and Ezra when that command was given. So, uh, in essence, therefore, if the command was given in 445 BC and then it took 49 years for the city and the wall to be rebuilt, if you subtract 49 years from 445, you get 396 BC. That's when the city and the wall were completed. Okay? But he did not tell us only about se uh, seven weeks, or, or, uh, which is 49 years for the rebuilding of the city. He also tell, told us that there, should be, there will be 62 weeks, which means 62 sevens. 62 times 7, 434 years. Now, if we then take for the 434 years and subtract 396, when the wall and the city were finished to be built, we get 38 uh, AD. 38 AD. Now, let me uh, explain why 38 AD. In the Bible, if you look at Genesis, the year was not 365 days like we have today. The year was 360 days. If you read in Genesis and also in Revelation, Revelation, John the Revelator writes about three, uh, three and a half years in Revelation chapter il, uh, 11. And those three and a half years, he equates them to 1,260 days, which in, in essence gives us 360 days for a year. So that gives us, dis, uh, uh, allows the discrepancy of 38. In essence, I was then, if we use that, uh, year, uh, year of 360 days, it gives us 33 AD, the year when the Messiah, the prince, was cut off according to what uh, Daniel had been told by the angel Gabriel. <laughs> I trust that you are following the mathematics. But it's in essence, that's what the 70 weeks of Daniel uh, tell us. But if you notice, the time frame that it gives us is 62 weeks and 7 weeks. If you add 62 and 7, that gives us 69 weeks. 
Uh, but initially, he has told us that there are 70 weeks. That then leaves us with one week that is left. Remember, we're saying a week is a week of years, which is one times seven, which is seven years. So there is a seven year uh, time frame that uh, he da- uh, is left when we t- put 62 and, and 7. Uh, but then he tells us in verse 27, then he shall confirm, um, okay, verse 26, after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off like we have already found off in 33 AD. Messiah is Jesus, uh, meaning he was going to be killed, uh, uh, but not for himself, obviously for the sins of the whole people. Um, and your sins and my sins. Then the one week that is left, he deals, us, deals with it in verse 27. Uh, that is one week of, of years, which is seven years. Then he says, then he shall confirm a, cov- a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of abominations shall, he, shall be one who makes desolate. Okay. Now, what does it mean? Uh, what does that, that uh, particular phrase mean? What it means is that uh, this one week is yet to be fulfilled. Uh, in between the 69 weeks and the last week, the last seven years, there's a time frame, a gap that occurs. Because uh, after 62 weeks, the Messiah is cut off, which is, means after the 69 weeks, Jesus died for us. But there's one week that is left that is yet to come. He tells us in verse 27, he tells us of one other individual who will make a covenant. A covenant is a treaty, a peace treaty, seven-year treaty. Um, uh, so I want to pick it up from there and begin to um, uh, add on as to what is happening. But like I said initially, in this whole prophecy is dealing with Israel and Jerusalem. So what it means is after 69 weeks there, The clock stops for the nation of Israel. The Messiah is cut off. Israel rejects the Messiah. And what what kicks in? What kicks in is the church age. The times of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles. Okay. Remember we said the 490 years deal with Israel. So the 69th week when the Messiah is cut off, the times of the Gentiles kick in. And that week is left suspended. It is yet to come. Okay, and then he tells us of a prince who is to come, who shall confirm a covenant with many. A prince who is to come. A prince who is to come. What's the identity of this prince who is to come? This prince who is to come in other parts of Daniel and the book of Revelation tells us there's different phrases used for him. In the book of Revelation, is called the beast, uh, the antichrist, the man who is to come. So that's his name that he is given in the scriptures. The prince who is to come, the antichrist, the beast. So uh, in essence, that is yet to happen. It says he will then, the antichrist will make a peace treaty of seven years with the nation of Israel. For those of you that follow world events, you will understand how the Middle East uh, dominates world world headlines uh, even in our day. But What I want to say with the church age between the 69th week and the 70th week is that the church age was not uh, something that God stumbled upon to say, oh, you know what? Israel has rejected me. What am I going to do? Let Let me start the church. No, 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 no. The church was there in the mind of God right from the beginning. Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writes and he says, to me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God, notice, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, Verse 11 is the verse that I want. According to the what eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. According to his eternal purpose. So the church was in the mind of God right from the beginning. Not because Israel had rejected the Messiah. No. Not because the 69th week had had come. uh, God got 
got uh, caught out and Israel rejected the Messiah and he, he didn't know what to do and then he ended up coming up with the church. No, he, it was the eternal purpose of God that there will be the church. So we are not a mistake. Even though the clock, according to Israel, they stopped on the 69th week. We were in the eternal purpose of God. We were on the mind of God. The church was on the mind of God. You and I were on the mind of God. Amen and amen. I wanted to emphasize that so that we are clear uh, in terms of uh, where the church comes in and uh, in, in, in terms of it being in the plan of God. So he tells us that the prince who is to come shall make a treaty with the nation of Israel for a week. A cov he will make a covenant. A covenant is a peace treaty for seven years. A seven year peace treaty. Now, how does that come in into our lives as, as, as the church? Uh, how does it come in with what we spoke about in terms of uh, our title when we said of vaccinations in 666? Now, let's read in uh, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Uh, that's w uh, where we pick it up again. In Revelation chapter 13, we meet the prince who is to come. That is mentioned in Daniel. Um, uh, it, we, we, we meet him and we want to pick it up from uh, verse 11. Actually, in, the, in, the, in chapter 13, there's two beasts. One is the religious one. One is the uh, political one. But let's pick it up in verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs uh, he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give breath to the image of the beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. Okay? I want you to notice that uh, there is two beasts that is mentioned. This second beast that he mentions uh, is not the Antichrist, the prince who is to come that we are mentioning. The prince who is to come is mentioned earlier on. But then there comes this beast who, which leads who, the, uh, the religious systems of the world and causes people to worship uh, the image of the Antichrist, the first beast, as mentioned in verse 15. Verse 15 is important. He was given power to give breath to the image of the beast. Who is this? The religious leader of the of 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 of, of, uh, of, of, of the religious leader of the one world system, because what is going to happen uh, towards the end of times eschatologically is that there will be drive to create a one world government, one world religious system, one world economic system, and uh, um, and uh, under this one world religious system we have this beast, this second beast, who is then causing people to worship. The image of the first beast, which is the Antichrist. He says in verse 15, he was given power to give breath to the image of the beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. So they had to worship the image. Notice worship, worship. So then verse 16, he also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name this calls for wisdom if anyone's any, anyone is inside let him calculate the number of the beast for it is man's number his number is 666 amen now how does that come uh, into our sharing uh, in that what we are speaking about, a lot of people are picking from these particular verses to say maybe the vaccinations are the 666, the mark of the beast. But I want you to notice uh, uh, where we have read that in verse 15, the religious leader, who is the second beast, causes people to worship the image of the Antichrist uh, who was killed. It was actually a false, uh, uh, ki there's a false resurrection that is put up. I don't have time to go into depth. But he also it says after People have worshipped, are worshipping him. He forces everyone, all those that are worshipping, to small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast 
or the number of his name. So, in my own interpretation, this mark of the beast is linked to worship of the of, 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 of the Antichrist. It's put on the, not only just the economic part, there is the economic aspect where one will not be able to buy or sell, but initially there is the worship of the Antichrist and then after the worship, there is the mark of the beast that is linked to the economic system. Um, that is put on the right hand and on the forehead. Obviously, that would use some of the technologies that are already there, uh, but people want to stretch things to the extreme. Just as much as we use technology right now, I'm coming across to you through technology. But so evil does use technology to come across. We know when we go onto the world wide web, the internet, there is good and there is also evil. So the Antichrist will also use some of the stuff. It does not mean that us as Christians now must not use the stuff because the Antichrist will use it. Just as much as the devil uses television and all the media that we have, he will use this also. Uh, um, it will obviously be a chip that will be put uh, on the right hand or on the forehead. Uh, in our days right now, uh, a, a lot of the identification is being used by many other things. It can be voice activation, it can be the eye, it can uh, it is called fingerprint and all of that. But this might necessarily be a chip that is under uh, the skin or on the forehead. And it will be used even for the economics of the, of the time. So, it is the point I am making is that it is linked to worship of the Antichrist. So, uh, people that will receive the mark of the beast, it will not creep upon them. They will know what is happening. They would have worshipped the Antichrist, and then they make a choice to receive it, even though there will, there will be the forcing. This is not connected to the vaccinations for COVID-19. If you want to take the vaccine, feel free. It has nothing to do with the mark of the beast or 666. Actually, when we read in the scriptures, I, my point of view from the scriptures that I read is that when the mark of the beast 666 is uh, taken or put upon people, we that are believers, th we that are the church, would have left ch the, the, the earth. Why do I say so? In the book of Thessalonians, it is says that the man of sin, that's the other name given for the Antichrist, has not yet been revealed because he that prevents him has not yet been removed or left the sin. In other words, right now, the reason he is not yet being revealed is because us who have the Holy Spirit, us the church, who have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, are preventing his being revealed when the church is raptured that's the word that is used by bible scholars but it's not in the bible uh it's we take it from first thessalonians chapter 4 in first thessalonians chapter 4 we are told uh, about the coming of the lord um let me quickly read it in verse 13 but i do not want you to be ignorant brothers concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so god will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of, the, of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Notice, the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead outside of Christ are not going to rise at this particular moment. Only the dead in Christ Hallelujah. There is two resurrections. Hebrews chapter 6 tells us of the, it says of the resurrections. This one, it is the dead in Christ that are rising first. The Bible scholars call, call it rapture. Uh, and then it says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall we always be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. So the dead in Christ are going to rise. And then we who are alive, I'm believing God that I'll be one of those who are alive, will be caught up together with them in the, in the clouds. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So the dead outside of Christ are going to remain. When the church leaves, uh, obviously I know there's many views amongst born again Bible believing Christians on this line. I am taking what I have seen from the scriptures. Others would have different views. Uh, but when the church is taken out and raptured, that is when 
uh, the Antichrist is revealed, the man of sin. That is when the seven years will kick in when the Antichrist comes and does a peace treaty with the nation of Israel. A Middle East, we could, you could call it a Middle East peace treaty. He's going to make a treaty with the nation of Israel. Now, when he does that treaty, you, if you connect with the revelation, the, the, the mark of the beast will not yet have been introduced. In other words, when the mark of the beast 666 is introduced, the church would have le already left the scene. What does that mean? It means because you and I are still here, there is no mark of the beast. Because we are still here. The Antichrist has not yet been revealed. So there is no mark of the beast. So the vaccinations are not ma the mark of the beast at all. So let's not confuse scripture uh, in that regard. Uh, let's not uh, intimidate or frighten people uh, uh, that would want to take the vaccines using this uh, dimension. 666 and the vaccinations are not linked. They are, it's not one and the same thing. The, the 666 is introduced when the church has left the scene, when we have been raptured, that's when we leave the scene, the Antichrist is, is revealed. He comes onto the scene. And when he comes onto the scene, he has a Middle East peace treaty, that covenant for one year, that 70th week, Daniel's 70th week, that kicks in. But I want you to notice what happens, what we are told earlier on in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, we are told that uh, when he has done the treaty in verse 27 of Daniel chapter 9, it says he will come, confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, in the middle of the treaty, three and a half years into the treaty, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a uh, Greek. Let me put it in English for you. In the middle of the week, in the middle of the treaty, in the middle of the seven years, he will break the treat. And then it says he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Let me explain this according to what uh, some uh, 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 aspects of scholars think. They believe that uh, the temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt. Now obviously that can be uh, controversial depending on where you're coming from. Because on the temple mount there is uh, uh, also the... the, the, the the, uh, the Dome of the Rock, and that's where we've got the Al-Aqsa mosques close by. So both Muslims and Jews and Christians hold that site sacred. O of the original temple, only the wall, the western wall remains. But most scholars believe that the temple will be rebuilt. And then when it has been rebuilt, uh, that's when this man of sin comes in. Uh, when he has done the peace treat, it says... He will cause the offering and sacrifice to come to an end. In other words, what does he do? He will come in and uh, stop the, the offerings and sacrifices in the temple and sacrifice a pig on the, on the altar. This actually has happened in history uh, uh, through a fellow called Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes did that in sacrifice. So it's almost like a mirror image of what is going to happen. Sacrifices a pig on the altar. And this is what is referred by Daniel. On the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate. And the Lord Jesus himself referred to this in uh, the book of, uh, in the Gospels. I'm picking it from uh, the book of Mark, Mark chapter 13. He says in uh, verse 13, And you shall be hated for my, for, by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. But when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it not ought, let the reader understand. I'm trying to make you understand. Because the Lord Jesus says, let the reader understand. He says, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, what is, what is he talking about? This is where this man of sin, this prince who is to come, then sacrifices a pig on the altar. That's what is referred to as the abomination of desolation. Uh, it says, Jesus said, then let those who are in Judea flee and to, uh, to the mountains. So during this seven year uh, time where the treaty is, that is when we have what the Bible calls the great tribulation. Where Jesus says there shall be so much uh, uh, tribulation such as has not been from the beginning 
of time until no ever shall be. So there shall be all sorts of things that I'm, we read in the book of Revelation that will be happening. So in essence, uh, what, what I'm simply saying to you this morning is that uh, the, the issue of 666 and the mark of the beast will okay when the church has been raptured and removed from the scene. The Antichrist will make a peace treaty with the nation of Israel. Not only the nation of Israel, he will rise and, and be head of the one world government. I do not have time to go into all of that, but there will be uh, a, 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 a one world government, a one world economic system, and a one world religious system. Uh, which we have or already said that it will be led by this second beast. But economic system, that's where now the 6-6 six, six comes in, a chip on the right arm or on the forehead for transactions. But you and I as the church of Jesus Christ would have left the scene. Um, uh, and anyway, the other part that I brought up from the beginning is that the mark of the beast is put on the individuals after uh, the worshipping of the Antichrist. So it is not something that will creep upon people. They will do it consciously and they will be knowing what, that, what, what will be happening and what the implications are. So uh, we need to be clear on those things. But the scriptures tell us very clearly about some of the end time events. Unfortunately, I am kind of squeezing all of this information within a short time frame. Um, it, it's something that would take weeks and weeks to look at. But uh, uh, in the midst of what is happening currently, I felt that there's a need for us to clarify those particular issues. But we have read that this prince who is to come then breaks the covenant uh, or the treaty that he makes and begins to persecute the nation of Israel. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that happen. But you and I will be removed from the sin and will be out of this. Uh, the other point that I want to, uh, may, uh, want to mention is that the Bible tells us, it says his number is 666 which is the number of men. In other words, the 666 is not something just to frighten us, but it's clearly indicating that the Antichrist, even though he will do wonders and signs, he will still be simple a man. Because in, in biblical numerology, in the way Bible numbers are used in the Bible, one is for uh, unity, two is for division, three is for the Godhead, the, the Trinity, four is the, is the earth, uh, five is grace, six is the number of men, seven is divine perfection. So he says six, six, six. He is not seven, he's not God, he's man. So whatever he will do, he will still be a man. That's what six, six, six uh, really simply uh, 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 puts across. So in essence, what are we saying? We are saying um, in the midst of all this, uh, vaccinations and six, 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 are not connected. Uh, uh, let's not confuse the two. 666 is a different thing uh, uh, that will come in after the rapture, after the church is removed. It will also be uh, linked to worship of the Antichrist, who is the prince who is to come, who does a, a, a treaty with the nation of Israel for seven years. He will head the one world government, uh, 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 in the one world economic system, uh, which is uh, something that is being pushed for right across, even in the times that we live in. Um, but the one thing that we must be able to observe is the things that are happening around us, because Bible prophecy is being fulfilled as uh, some of the events are unfolding before us. Things that are happening around us are showing that the coming of the Lord is drawing near. And so we need to be alert and watch and, and do what the scriptures uh, tell us and exhort us to, 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 to do. Uh, in, um, I, I just want to then end with a couple of things um, that show us the times that we live in. In Matthew chapter 24, it says uh, of the times, the end times when the Lord is about to come, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. James chapter 5 says, Therefore be patient, and brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it, it receives the early and latter rain. Um, so he's talking about the fact that there will be preaching of the gospel, there will be revival, people will be getting saved. But besides that, there will also be abhiva. It says in Matthew 24 verse 5, For many will come in my name and saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. 
for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences, epidemics, pandemics, uh, and earthquakes in various places, volcanoes in the DRC, erupting, etc., etc. So there's many things that are happening that are part of uh, the fulfillment of the scriptures. And we need to be aware of, of those particular things. But what we need to do as individuals is uh, this is what uh, the Bible tells us in uh, how we ought to live. It says we must watch and pray. Mark chapter 13 verse 33. It says take heed, watch and pray. You do not know when the time is. Watch and pray. So we must watch and pray. Like somebody put it. Let's live like Jesus Christ is coming tomorrow. But let's, li let's plan our lives like he's coming in the next 50 years. Let's live like he's coming tomorrow, but plan our lives like he's coming in the next 50 years. So we must watch and pray. The second thing, we must preach the gospel. In Matthew 24, verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Psalm 2, verse 8 says, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. We must ask of God for the nations of the world. Lord, give us the Americas. Lord, give us the continent of Africa. Lord, give us Asia. Lord, give us uh, Europe. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. We must preach the gospel and ask God for the nations of the world. Number three, we must do business till he comes. So he called ten of his servants, Luke 19 verse 13, and delivered to them ten miners and said to them, do business till I come. Hallelujah. So in other words, uh, the scriptures do not teach us that whilst we wait for the coming of the Lord, we, shall, we should go up away somewhere on a mountain and wait for him. These doomsday cults that do like that, they uh, cease to work, leave school, uh, and then go and wait for him on a mountain. Nowhere does the Bible tell us to do that. It says, do business till I come. Whatever you are doing, do it till he comes. So we must be engaged. Go to school, uh, whatever, work, business, everywhere. Do business till he comes. It's not time to... Uh, stop doing what we are doing and wait for him on some mountain somewhere. No, 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 no. We must do business till he comes. Our lives must be in line with God's word. We must live perpendicular lifestyles uh, and living lives that are in line with God's word. So those are some of the things that we need to do as we wait for the coming of the Lord. Amen and amen. I trust that uh, the mathematics were clear. Uh, if not, please uh, do comment and ask questions we, uh, we can answer them but uh, uh, I think what I wanted to put across uh, is to destroy the fallacy that vaccines are linked to 666 not at all 666 is a different scenario altogether it's something that will happen according to the scriptures when the church has been removed from the scene when the church has been raptured and not only that it's something that will be part of worship of the antichrist the prince who is to come the one, uh, the leader of the one world government right now is not yet revealed because the church is preventing uh, uh, his uh, revealing because we are the ones running the scene. The church uh, is, is God's government right now on here on earth. So when we leave the earth, then he will be revealed. Then the great tribulation will begin. Uh, that's what the scriptures tell us. I hope maybe in some of the sessions to come we'll, we'll get time to expound and expand on this particular subject topic. But if you don't, if you didn't get anything at all of the mathematics, do get this one thing. What I'm simply saying is that the vaccines and 666 are not connected. Uh, the vaccines are not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is something totally different. Amen and amen. Uh, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I just want to invite you to accept him as Lord and Savior. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. If you may call him and invite him into your heart, the Bible says you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You become a child of God. I just encourage you to make that decision and accept, him, accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining us. May the Lord bless you and watch over you uh, even at this time and hour. Amen.